Hello? I'm alive! Alright, sorry. Uh, Streamlabs just shit the bed on me. I'm back, am I back? Do you guys see me? Can you hear me? Alright, so two missions left? That's good. So this one and then one more. No, I know, like, I'm, I don't mean to... I don't need to explain it. <laughs> it just, it, you know, when I'm in the middle of talking and then something shuts down for no reason. You can't hear me? Oh. You're making a joke. Dick. Wait, are you not making a joke? Are you messing with me? June, I'm fragile. You can't do that to me. Try to score some multi kills. Ah, oh, shit. You doing a pistol only run? I actually. I wasn't paying nearly enough attention for that. Um, I actually like the pistol quite a bit. Uh, I know it doesn't do a ton of damage, but there's. There's something appealing about the extra control, and if I knew I could avoid getting hit enough for that to be effective, I think that would be really fun. Oh, you're welcome. I don't charge extra for PTSD on this channel. Alright, let's see. Rocket launchers work really good for the Mancubus. Oh no, I'm thinking of the other guy. Well, that works too. Two more missions. Okay, got it. Yeah, bitch. I want to finish it tonight. Um, I kind of want to get to... I never played Resident Evil 3, which I want to do. Especially now that 8 is out. So I want to finish up Doom. Which I'm mostly playing just because my, my nephew seemed to like watching it. And I want to finally finish a game. The good old days of Resident Evil 3. That's right. The remake, though. Because I, I bought the remake when it was on sale recently. Ooh, achievement. Fully upgraded. Oh yeah, fully upgraded every... All the... Thingies. You know the thingies. Uh, eh, eh, eh. I'm I'm still kind of mad that I didn't get I don't have any kills for the Hell Knights. As far as Resident Evil goes, I kind of like the way they're going with it, and that um, the Kill four more demons during a single mobile turret deployed five times. Alright, that's easy. Uh, it seems like what they're doing with Resident Evil is it's no longer just going to be a zombie franchise. 
Um, which I think is neat. Although I did, I played the demo, the, the village demo yesterday. And I, I had a hard time with the werewolves. The lichens. So I'm probably just not used to that style of gameplay anymore. Because I got pretty good at 7. That's a headshot. There we go. Alright. <laughs> I was hoping for another headshot, but... Blow his legs off, sure. Madam Titty, yeah. I mean, I just, I sort of like that they're just, they're branching out from the typical zombie format. Not that I dislike zombies, but they called it Resident Evil, and I feel like Resident Evil should... Oh yeah, the gun. Well, I have it fully upgraded, so I had these missiles on the side. It's not zombies, technically, but it's still kind of zombies. It's pretty zombies. Like, yeah, technically you're right. Like, technically none of them have been like zombies in the strictest sense because it's they're they're like infected although kind of they are oh it's murky I think it's murky but I don't think it's a problem per se I just kind of like that they're expanding what evil in Resident Evil means. Yeah, give me that eyeball, baby. Next game you fight politicians. Oh, there you go. Hey, get out of here, invisible bitch. Ooh. Good opportunity. Now come back. Oh, come on, baby. I promise this will only hurt for a second. BAM! I was trying to line them up for a... Uh, for that double kill. Fine. I'll save you for last. I sort of feel like in Resident Evil 6, you did fight politicians to a certain extent. Not explicitly, but like, in the game, like you're trying to convince the president that he needs to get safe. Hey, stop it. No, don't die! Damn it. You asshole. Oh, yeah, uh. No, that was five.
Uh, six. Six took place all over the place. Um, it had all the pairings. Like, uh... Yeah, all the different people. Um... Chris and... Who's Chris with? Leon was with Elena. Chris... Ada was with a guy named Agent, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Like, they are... They should be broken people by now, really. Every single one of them. If the zombie threat is ever done... They are... Gonna need some therapy. Hundo percent. Friendly villagers. Zombie! He'd be a perfect cop in America. Aw, oh, look at this shit. The House of Pain! Oh, secret area. Hell yeah. How are things in America? Um... I think they're... better than they were in the last four years. Uh... I think the... I personally think the president's doing a pretty good job. Not everybody would agree with me. Um... Although a lot of people would. Uh, Biden's... approval rating seems to be pretty high um, across most demographics, except for the people that don't get polled or don't, or choose not to be polled. Um... I don't know, there's a little bit of unrest here and there, but, uh... I think things are on their way to being better. Uh... Apparently, one of the... one of the heads of the Republican Party is about to be removed because she won't go along with the... the theory that the last presidential election was stolen which is ludicrous because effectively the Republican Party is <laughs> is trying to take out someone that won't lie to the people but that's what they want I guess so politically things are frustrating right now in my mind in my eyes but uh, overall, things have somewhat quieted down. Okay. Biden is not Republican. Biden is uh, the... He was the Democratic candidate. Um... Although, really, what was the challenge for the chain gun? Four or more demons, okay. Although, really, um, Biden's values, they're not, like, progressive. 
The real benefit of Biden is that he can kind of be pressured into things. Uh, so the progressives can kind of pressure him into things. The uh, Republicans can a little bit as well. Even though they make it seem like they have no pull at all in anything ever. It is and it isn't. Like, in America, the leader isn't really expected to be, like, the mind that everybody goes by. He's supposed to be, like, he's supposed to represent everybody in the country. But, you know, everybody's got their own agendas, things like that. Being so easily swayed isn't normally considered like a good thing, I would say. But it's, I think it's better than the alternative, so I'll take it. Fuck off. I'd rather have that and have good people speaking into his ear than have a uh, dear leader. It has. Like... I haven't experienced a lot of presidents, but during the last four years I really missed having a period of time where I didn't hear about the president every day. Because in the grand scheme of things, like, the president generally shouldn't affect my life on a day-to-day -day basis. And yet every day I'd watch the news and find myself shaking my head like this this isn't normal this shouldn't be normal uh, I know I know not everyone would agree with me on that but oh you heard about him too like in a, in a positive light or a negative light Okay. Oh no. Like, really bad? Oh, you mean the things that you heard about him were negative, or the things that you... the things that he was... Like, was he for or against the guy? Hey, I could've grabbed this thing that whole time. Okay. Oh. Okay. I don't know how those things develop over over time. I get into a bunch of political arguments with my dad, and then, uh, I think he's, he's kind of getting sick of it. <laughs> he's, he's... Like, he's not... 
pro-Republican at this point, but he's sort of more centrist. But the way I view Republicans at this time is like, if you're a centrist, you're basically pro-Republican. He used to hate crime, then he hit 60 and suddenly... <laughs> oh, hate China, sorry. I don't know, maybe he's, maybe he's like, um, yeah. Maybe he's nostalgic for it or something. Not from China. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it wouldn't be nostalgia, really. Alright, alright, alright. I get the I get the idea, guys. Oh, you bastard. Eat shit. It's supposed to be a headshot. I find it hard to be pro-China at all uh, these days. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even do business with them if uh, I didn't feel like it was the only decently priced option. Like, I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt, but it seems like between the the Uyghur people and um, other human rights violations. <laughs> it's hard to think of them as anything other than totalitarian... Uh, you know, totalitarian, authoritarian so-and-sos. And as time goes on, yeah, I could definitely understand that sentiment. My, I, I feel bad for the people in China that uh, have to live under all that. And like on top of everything else, there's like, there's like social systems, like social credits set up so that if somebody, if somebody's having a bad day, you can ruin their life a little bit. If they're talking bad about a government, you can have them arrested, like... It's like a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> Although I will say... This is like my my privilege talking, really. For for the last four years, I didn't want to be an American citizen. <laughs> like I felt ashamed. Even now, I feel a little bit ashamed of of what the U.S. has become. Although, 
I shouldn't focus too heavily on that because uh, the the alt right is sort of growing all over the place, not just in the U.S. Asians have always been exploited and colonial colonized by Europeans and Americans. Yeah. I mean if you really if you really dig into the past, like you can find conflicts between every group in history. Um And the U.S. is absolutely not, uh, their hands aren't clean at this point either, just in general. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, to a certain extent, getting your hands dirty is just a matter of survival, like... Like, yeah, it's easy to say no country's hands are clean, but... If any country had clean hands, they'd get... They'd get rocked. They'd get destroyed. Easily. China's so blatant, yeah, because they can be. Because it actually, in a way since their goal seems to be control, at least as far as I can tell, um, they need it to be blatant so so everybody knows the rules if you if you decide to step out of line. And then they say, no, nothing's wrong, as they put the knife in your back. So from like a uh, maintaining power perspective, I'm sure <laughs> it actually works out in their favor. Because they don't actually have to care if people know about their abuses. And the world is kind of totally reliant on them at the moment. Oh shit. Yeah. No, and I'm sure that's all by design. Like, they're just... They're gonna keep towing the line until they don't get... Uh, until they don't get hit back for it. And then... Uh, And then they'll push it a little bit further, and they'll say, well, you didn't do anything last time, why are you doing something now? Which is a classic bully tactic, really. Oh shit! That makes me mad. I I went to jump, but there was like a little map piece that got in front of me that stopped me from having forward momentum. And by the time I realized what was happening, it was too late. But I think China is actually really well positioned to be, like, 
one of the next big stars of the world, really. Really? Come on. I made it. I made it. I made it. I feel like I'm playing Alto 4 again now. Except worse. I think I'm just gonna jump past them. Hopefully that works. Yeah. I think, I feel like that was the only way to do that, because... I just, I, they're, they're too finicky to, like, be doing that on, on non-solid ground like that. I never really used remote detonation. I wonder if that's good. I sort of like lock on burst though. Uh, I'll start upgrading the rocket launcher. The lock on burst. I suppose I also could have used the BFG. And I hope when I'm in hell I can make statues that just vomit blood constantly. Sure. Hey, look at that. He must not reach the crucible. He must not reach the crucible. Man. Don't have too much fun. Hoping I'd get a few more double kills out of that.
Um, increases how long they remain in stagger state. Increases the value of ammo received from demons and items. I think I might go with that one. Uh, move faster after performing a glory kill. Significant in control over an air movement after a double jump. Uh, demons become more glory kill friendly due to a high damage resistance when staggered. Let's try it. You mooks. You got a good chamooks. Did that? Oh, it did. Okay. Oh, hats. You silly boy. What are those? Kill a mancubus with the pistol. Kill two Keiko demons with one shot. I could probably do that with the BFG. I wonder if that negates it. Kill ten demons with explosive barrels. Ba -bum, ba -bum. I'm lagging. Hey, come here! Touch my barrel! Oh, that didn't work. Hey, no fair. That was fast. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Just trying to get cute with uh with one of the big guys. Yeah, I died. I died horde. We're <laughs> gonna die someday. That's why I subscribed to Poignant Ni Nihilism. At least to some extent. Blow up! Damn it.
Oh, June. I started putting more time into Final Fantasy XII. And I'm getting into it a little bit. I don't know anything about the story at this point. Um, but the the farming aspect of the game is sort of yeah. The farming aspect of the game is sort of uh, I guess what I'm into. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I feel like I'm just trying to fast forward through it. Like, I don't, I don't know if I actually like it, or if I just want to know what late game is like. That's probably it. Because it seems like it can be cool. Is it Fran? Yeah, two mouths to feed challenge on the cost me one BFG bullet. Round, I guess. The random events that sometimes occur. I guess I haven't had any random events. What do you mean? No, don't you dare. Oh, that's random? I figured it was just a state of the map. I was in, um... I think the... I think it's the Giza Plains. South of Ravanaster. Um, I thought the game state changed and it was just raining at that point. After you go through the Death Temple. Do you think I can run across those chains? Oh, okay. Hey, BFG ammo. And health. And armor. More armor. What is that? Time to touch the thingy. Later it's random. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fine. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not great that you got da brain damage or anything, but it's fine that you don't know. What the butts? Hey, I don't like that guy. Oh, this guy's a dreadnought? Ow!
Oh, okay. Gotcha. I don't know a ton about Warhammer. I know bits and pieces. Like, I know about Ultramarines. Gimme. I got my heart beat up a little bit. Warhammer 40k Dreadnought is a big armored suit controlled by a small corpse of mortally wounded space marine. Oh, neat. Two of them? Do they share a health bar? Do I get a checkpoint in the middle? If not, I might end up just skipping this if I can. Oh, there we go. Okay. Shooting him in the back seems to do much more damage. Maybe not. Yeah, no, but the 
whenever I shoot him in the back, it doesn't seem like it's doing much more. I could definitely be wrong about that. It would not surprise me to learn that I was wrong about that. By any means. Outnumbered? No problem. Hey, I beat the Hellguards. And I can reclaim the Crucible. Unless, maybe, like, they did kind of have, um, fleshy bits all over. So maybe when I was shooting at the chest, I was just accidentally hitting the fleshy bits. Well, if, um, if... Shadow Ninja, what was his name? Darkness Ninja. If Darkness Ninja was telling the truth, then this should be my last mission, right? Shot a fireball for luck. Hi. Hey. Good night. You bought a new rum. You can take him with you. He doesn't love me. He probably doesn't love anybody. Treat this boy as your own. He doesn't even you have the crucible, <laughs> and with it, the means to contain the power of the well. We have a plan to send you there. Vega will walk you through the process. Leave me alone, Vega. What's the... what's the new rum? Have you tried it yet? Is it good? Drum. But is it like a brand name? I'm just wondering if I might know it. This is my primary operating facility. It is where I was created and where my core processing unit is maintained. It takes approximately oh, Kraken. Yeah, okay. watts of power to sustain my operational capabilities. But it has been decided that we can use that power to send you to the source of the portal. I will not survive the procedure and am unable to self-terminate, so I will not um, process. I only had it once. Facility doors have been secured. It's like a dark room, right? We need to begin by finding a way in and disabling the security systems. Usually when I get rum, I just go for the cheap stuff. Um, so I don't know if I would be the best gauge of <laughs> whether or not it's good. Black Spiced, yeah. Um, so that's, it's an excellent question. Right. I don't remember it being bad. Uh, but I think I was already drinking when I tried it. Kill five summoners using a lock-on burst. Okay, I can do that. Where are we at here? I only need a little bit more armor.
Yeah. Hey. I, I want to say Kraken was like 25 or 30 bucks for a 750 milliliter bottle. Which in my mind is a little expensive, especially when I can get one and a half liters for of of uh, one of my other rums for like Yeah, say what you want about America. We have pretty cheap liquor. <laughs> it I mean I it's been a while since I looked at the price on it, so I could be wrong. Um Do you guys use the the US dollar? Or do you use a different currency? Yeah, taxes will taxes will hurt. Singapore dollar. Oh wow. So <laughs> So it's even worse than I thought. Oh, that's okay. Uh, okay, so less less bad than I thought. Um The when I do get rum, it'll usually be like, I'll get a one and a half liter for like $12. Because most of the time when I'm drinking rum, I'm either trying to get drunk or buying it for mixed drinks, in which case I don't really care about the quality of the rum. What variety is the spice of death? Five different glory kills on imps. A liberal die in a few months. Are you drinking a lot? Or do you mean if you could get rum that cheap? Oh, okay, okay. I missed the comment about living in the US. I don't know. When it's when it's super accessible, I know a lot of people do have drinking problems. But um, I feel like when it's when it's really accessible, it's it's not as you sort of I don't know. I don't want to speak for everybody, but for me, like the culture in the U.S. Uh, tends to frown upon like excessive drinking, unless you join a frat or something similar. Um, for me, I usually only drink at night, and uh, usually only on weekends. Shiny. Yeah. So if, if there's a lot of people in chat and you want your message to look uh, special, you can highlight it. Yeah, I never I never drink to excess. I'll drink a lot. Don't get me wrong. But um I know people I don't want to say I know people that do this, but there are people that will like routinely get blackout drunk. And I I did that once 
I don't really have any interest in doing that again. Yeah, I know a lot of people do. Like, I don't know, I guess I didn't have the, the typical uh, teenage years, because uh, a lot of my peers, I'm sure, had drinking parties and such, but I actually didn't drink more than like a can of beer until after I was 21, which is the drinking age here. <clears throat> and even then, like, it had been drilled into me that it was such a such a faux pas to do that, that um, I really didn't. I was, I was sheltered. <laughs> My parents would always test the water, like, hey, do you want to try this beer? I bet you won't like it. But, I don't know. It just didn't appeal to me. And the only time it, uh, there was beer, like, within my grasp was, uh, my, my friend had a whole bunch of beer just sitting in the back of his car from his uncle's house. And so we were outside of our other friend's house the one day, and we just cracked them open and, and started tasting them. Ugh. See, I don't know. I guess... Not, I'm sure that that... That imagery doesn't appeal to anybody. Like, nobody wants to wake up with their face in the toilet. But, um... I saw my dad like that a couple times, and it just... It didn't seem like something I wanted for me. Not that I was... Not that I, like, judged him for it. I'm sure he had fun. See, I always get the, the power up too late. I don't know, maybe I just didn't feel like I was in a in the right social class for for like going to parties and drinking and shit. Cause drinking never really had an appeal to me, and then my one friend showed up with beer the one time and we tried it and it was okay. And then he started smoking weed a lot, which I had also never tried by that point. And uh I don't know. Oh yeah, I, I, I'll drink the occasional beer because I like the taste. Um, and lick, I like the taste of liquor. I think a lot of liquor has very interesting tastes. Uh, you know, rums, uh, tequilas, whiskeys. I like whiskey a lot. My vital operating systems are now vulnerable. I recommend destroying my coolant system first. This will accelerate the destabilization process. I actually... I prefer liquor more often now, more than beer, just because, um, you know, obviously I like the way that alcohol makes me feel, but also, oh, did I frame drop? 
Yeah, I like the way I, I like the way alcohol makes me feel, and uh, it doesn't have the carbonation that beer does. So it doesn't leave me feeling bloated. Okay, I did get the headshot. When I do drink beer, I don't I don't just drink like chain beers. I mean, I'll drink them. My dad likes a brand called Labatt's Light. Labatt Blue Light. Something like that. And, uh, it's fine. I don't like a lot of it. But I like the, I like the craft brew scene because they experiment with a lot of flavors. You get a lot of variety in those. And the taste is pretty much the only reason I drink beer at this point. Duvel? I've never had Duvel. Never heard of it, really. Is it like a... Pills? I think my favorite my favorite type of beer overall would be like um like a nice wheat beer. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like if I'm going out, if I'm gonna buy a drink, a beer at a restaurant, I wanna taste something new. <laughs> I don't wanna go out and get the same shit I can buy and drink at home for a third of the cost. Belgian strong pale ale style. Uh, okay. I'm not- I'm not usually big on pale ales, but I've been getting into them more. Uh, since- <laughs> since a friend of mine left a case of pale ales at my house and I just drank them because they were here. Um, I've been getting a bit more of a taste for pale ales, but I- Generally, I didn't- I didn't like them before that. Stats are very heavy. Um, a good way to get the taste of a stout in a lighter beer is a porter. They're usually not as heavy. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Stouts are very heavy. They're really good. I mean, I, you're, you're in kind of a tropical climate, so this probably won't ever apply to you, but they're really good on cold nights. A stout, a stout is a real good drink to have on, uh, on a winter night. So if you ever have the chance when it's cold, have one then. It'll make a lot more sense. <laughs> but they're good. They're good most of the time. I think what I really like about stouts is they're usually like... Um, coffee and chocolate and... It's like a dessert in a beer.
chunky boy. Oh, ciders are real good. Do love me a cider. Toffee apple. Wow. I've never heard of that. That sounds great. Too sweet? Oh, okay. Should you find yourself caught in a level three demon contamination event, it is important that you remain calm. Well, that sucks. It, it sounds. Yeah, sourness makes sense uh, for a cider. But it, it sounds like toffee apple sounds like something that would be awesome. It's a shame that it's too sweet. I'd probably still try it <laughs> if I saw it. Uh, I, there was a there's a, a pretty local company that makes. I don't know if you've ever heard of Hershey's chocolate. I don't know how global that is. Um, Hershey is a company that's that's not too far from me that makes chocolate, basically, and uh, one of the local uh, beer makers. Oh, you know what? Cool. One of the local beer makers made a Hershey's chocolate stout. Um, that was a big hit uh, over here. Like, their first run of it was, like, completely sold out. It's pretty good. It, it's... It's good enough that I'll get it whenever I see it. But at the same time, it's, um... It's, like... It's heavy enough that I can have one and I'm done, then I move on to something lighter. Uh, but what was really interesting about it was I went to a bar that had it, and on their menu they had mixed they had mixed beer drinks, and they mixed uh, the Hershey's the Hershey's chocolate. Um, I think it was a porter, the Hershey's chocolate porter, with uh, like a cherry drink, a cherry beer, or uh, a couple other things. And I I didn't expect to like it all that much, but it was really good. Like it didn't it didn't taste to me like chocolate covered cherries necessarily but it was good uh, okay what am I supposed to do here do I just attack it is this an elevator can't go behind that oh <laughs> there's a hole there I guess that's the way I'm supposed to go. Hey, little man! He's like a green, little green guy. I got a weapon upgrade point. Can I do anything with it? I gotta remember the next time I see a bunch of those like weak skeleton guys. To, to take out my chain gun. And I gotta take out my rocket launcher next time I see a wizard summoner. I, 
guess I could upgrade this and work on getting 100% of my weapon upgrades. I need a rocket launcher. Oh, I needed to kill us that uh, on that, right? Shit. Yeah, so I really like what um, the smaller breweries are doing these days. Like, they're not afraid to be out there. And it works. Uh, the one time... So I found this, this one beer, and I'll tell you the name in a minute. It's a porter that's like peanut butter, uh, amongst other things, and it's really good. And uh, I went out, <clears throat> one of my one of my former bosses decided to take us out uh, for some kind of event to a bar, <laughs> and um, I found out that the bar that I was at had this beer that I really liked. And so I ended up I ended up getting that thinking I wasn't going to really drink for the evening. And uh, when I finished the first one the guy came over and I said is she paying for this? And he said yeah. And I said well then I'll have another. And I did that a couple times. And I eventually after several rounds, I depleted their stock of it. The beer was called uh, Purple Monkey Dishwasher Peanut Butter Porter. 
Like, that was the full name of it. And it's so good. I haven't found a peanut butter porter that's that comes close yet. <laughs> but it's real good. It is, but you know what? The name is worth it. Because <laughs> it is a good freaking beer. I want to find cases of it, but I, I feel like it's probably expensive. I even got my dad to try it, and he's a he's a creature of habit when it comes to beer. He's got one or two that he really likes to have on an, on a regular occasion, and that's what he's always got on hand, and that's what he drinks, and that's fine. But <laughs> all of his kids like craft beers, whiskeys, and all all those kinds of things. And so we keep getting him to try new things, and I think I think he's afraid to find something new that isn't as cheap as what he normally gets. Because he's a simple guy with simple tastes. <laughs> Whatever. Whenever he finds something for me to try, I'll, I'll go on about like, oh, this has a nutty flavor, and and but it's a little bit floral or a little bit sweet or you know whatever. And then he just looks at me like, like I'm speaking Greek. Cause I don't know, like having, not not just going for a single beer, I think has sort of given me. Uh, it sort of expanded my palate a little bit. I, like, I take the time to try to taste the different things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he kind of is, yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's true. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I don't know what kind of environment your dad grew up in. But my dad, um, pretty much he was a take what you can get kind of guy for a long time. And then, uh, you know, nowadays there's all these different choices you get. All these different kinds of beers and... But back during his heyday, it was pretty much you drank what you could afford. Yeah. Yeah, which I mean, you know, if I was if I wanted to drink a lot of a liquid and <laughs> and get a little bit drunk, yeah, I'd probably go for a beer too. I'd get a nice case of something cheap like Yangling or Lion's Head. But usually, what am I supposed to be doing right now? I blew up all the cores, right? But for me, when I'm drinking, it's either... On one hand, I'm drinking for the taste. On the other hand, I'm drinking to get drunk. In which case, I still prefer taste, but I'll, you know, I'll take what I can get if I'm trying to get drunk. Usually liquor, because it'll be cheaper. Guaylo. 
Why? Does that mean something or is it just does it just sound silly? And he's slang for Westerners or other people. <laughs> So just out of curiosity, what does it literally translate to? Oh, there it is. I thought it said there were four cores. <laughs> you know what? I understand. Yeah, no. I... I get it. I like. White people are kind of shit to the rest of the world. Freaking Europeans and then Americans and. I mean, it's kind of true. I mean, not specifically because of the color of our skin, but... Yeah. But generally... Uh, Europeans and Americans tend to be white, and they've colonized a lot of the world. And done a lot of terrible shit. I mean, uh, obviously... That doesn't take into account all the all the other people that did bad shit to each other, obviously. But all the same. We've all got fucked up history. It sucks, but that's the way of the world. All we can do is try to make things better as we move forward. If there's no British colonization, who knows where Singapore would be now? You think it was for the better? I mean, maybe. It, it's, you know, it's tough to say, I think. Yeah, which I'm sure improved the wealth of the area quite a bit, for sure. We'll take you to the entrance. Um, but, uh, you know, who's to say that Singapore couldn't have done that themselves for whatever... I mean, I, like, I don't know the history of Singapore, so maybe it wasn't really in the cards at that point, but, uh... Maybe they could have done it themselves, or maybe another country could have helped them out in a more mutually beneficial way. He's an island of fishermen. For you to gain access to my core, the demonic threat must be removed from the room ahead. Well. 
piss off. You wankers. Sounds like they had fish. <laughs> if they if they had access to to um salt and or well, I guess there's probably not a lot of natural ice in Singapore. But if they had access to salt, they could pack up their fish. Oh, okay. So yeah, overall not great. <laughs> Colonization probably worked out better for some places than others. It's definitely a possibility. You might be right. I bet there's a lot of people that wouldn't that wouldn't see it that way, but but I, I you know I think it's uh yeah. Yeah, it's tough to say. You know, the whole world could have been different if uh, Genghis Khan had had conquered more of the world, or if Alexander the Great hadn't conquered as much. Who knows what the world would look like. But the world goes on. Oh yeah, it, it's. I don't think it's insensitive, but but. I think context is also important with a statement like that. Like saying "move on" would would come across as a little bit different <laughs> from me, for example. Than from from you, I'd imagine. But it's important to know the past so that we can try to try to recognize the signs of atrocities occurring before they occur. You know. Oh yeah. So, um, but as far as that goes, in the U.S. recently, there's been uh, a lot of renewed talk about things like reparations for former 
uh, basically for black people who uh, would be generally the descendants of uh, slaves. And I think the reason it gets it gets brought up a lot is not so much that um, it's not so much that uh, present day people are being blamed for these things so much as it is about um, trying to get uh, black communities up to par with where they should be had they been allowed to participate in the market. But, like, the U.S. has done some fucked up shit to not just black people, but, but all minorities, people of color. But I, I, I think it's true that they need to be brought up to uh, a fair competing level, like They've gotten a, a real bad shake over the years. You know, I don't love the idea of, of giving up more of my money for for other people, but I don't think it was. Well, and it's but it's not just segregation is the thing. Like, there's tons of policies about like. There's, there's a lot to go into on that topic. <laughs> um, there were policies of things like redlining where uh, they would actively show, um, like real estate agents would actively show only specific neighborhoods to black or white renters depending on what race they were. And, you know, I could show you a house that normally would cost, like, let's say $100,000. And then, uh, if you were not the right color for the neighborhood, in order to prevent uh, property values from going down in the neighborhood because it was a white neighborhood, then I, I could tell you a much higher price to try to convince you... Yeah, I could say, this is a $200,000 house. And you'd say, well, that's nuts. Take me to the $100,000 houses. And then they'd take you to a black neighborhood. Um, and this was a common practice. Like, that kind of shit was, was happening all the time uh, years and years ago. It's probably still in practice in a number of places, but they don't talk about it really in a modern context. Um, but the, 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 the root of the issue comes from, like, the days of actual slavery and the days following it, because if you were an enslaved person, you basically had no wealth, you had nothing, you had no property, you had no money, um, you worked all your all the value that you generated went to your slave owner and uh, you would see none of it <clears throat> so when they finally got freed when they finally got their freedom um, it would make sense to like give the freed enslaved people formerly enslaved people money like something to start their life in this country and a lot of them didn't get that uh, none of them got that really so if you had nothing and you were suddenly told you're free now like you don't have generational wealth you don't have equity in anything you have to earn your way up but then 
you find an environment where the, you're actively discriminated against in terms of like getting a job or you know anything and so um, and not only that but there's a ton of economic policies that discourage you from from maintaining wealth So it's like, where are you supposed to make money? And I, like, for, as a, as a trading city, that would make a lot of sense. Um, you know, people of all kinds would be passing through that area, I assume, for one reason or another. And then as you were passing through, if you ended up finding a way to make a life there, then you could do that. Thank you, Vega. Um, but in the U.S., like, almost, almost all of the black people that were brought in were brought in as slaves. By slave traders and so it's like they didn't choose to be here they have nothing to their name um, and they don't have anything to fall back on because a lot of the ones that were alive when they were freed were born here so it's not like you just go back and move in with family back in you know whatever country And so you're starting from zero and you're told, hey, go make a name for yourself. Well, that's a lot of, a lot of new people fresh on the market for work. And they're probably not going to go work for the people that they just got freed from. So it's like, where are you supposed to go? And like they start out from a disadvantaged position and then they're constantly crippled so they never have a way to get, to get ahead. Unless they're really lucky. And then there's constant issues like... They have to face... Uh, I mean segregation was a big thing. There's extreme racism that still exists in some... in a lot of parts of the country. Um... There's, uh, yeah, there's, um, back when, uh, Richard Nixon was president to the U.S., he made marijuana illegal because, specifically because, he wanted to prevent two groups of people from voting, uh, hippies and black people, <laughs> well, and Mexicans. Uh, he wanted to prevent them from voting because the data showed that they would not vote for him. Um, so he made marijuana illegal, and now that's why... That's why in the, the 60s and 70s, a lot of black people got locked up. Specifically. Um, there was... Uh, the CIA actually introduced crack cocaine uh, a more I think it's more addictive I don't remember uh, a different form of crack or a different form <laughs> of cocaine um, into black communities and then uh, criminalized that oh the CIA is terrible I'd like to think that they do some good things, but like, maybe everything I've seen just paints them in a really bad light. It seems like they just do terrible shit all the time. <laughs> but yeah, so they, they introduced crack cocaine into uh, black communities, and black communities got hooked on it, because it's crack cocaine. And then uh, law enforcement locked up 
people for being addicted to crack cocaine and it like So suddenly, there were communities that just lost a ton of um, a ton of parents into the criminal system, which put a lot of kids into the government system for um, for orphans, like. Crack, yeah, crack cocaine, I think is mixed, it's cocaine, I think, mixed with baking soda. I don't know what it does, uh, why it's different. It might, it might just be that it makes cocaine smokable rather than snortable, but I, I, <laughs> I'm not an expert on crack cocaine, so don't. You know, feel free to do your own research on it. Oh, the prison system is awful. Like... From a humanitarian standpoint, it's probably not as bad as, like, a Panamanian jail, for example. But, um... But it just seems like it's so easy to end up in, in a U.S. jail for, for so many years. Try to do research on crack cocaine. Central Narcotics Bureau. <laughs> Singapore would come knocking on your door. Do you think so? Like they'd come after you just for researching it, even if it's purely research? Oh no, absolutely not. Uh in the U.S., uh, prisons are for-profit, which means, in a capitalist society, a prison has every reason to uh, not rehabilitate uh, the people that, that go there. Because if you think about it, like if I'm... If I'm McDonald's, as an oversimplified example, why would I, why would I do research into making my customers healthier? If my customers are healthier, they're going to want my food less, right? I, I want my customers to want to come back, or to have to come back. So if a prison is for profit, they want prisoners to come back. <laughs> they want more people to go to jail so that they can make money off of it. So it's like, I don't know, it's, it's completely insane to me. I don't know why anybody, how anybody could justify for profit prisons, especially because, um, the, the prisons can use The prisons can use uh, basically forced labor, essentially slavery. I mean, not as probably not as bad as would have been experienced uh, in in actual slave days, but almost exactly slavery <laughs> uh, in prisons to create products so that the prisons can sell. They get free labor. And the prisoners get nothing out of it. Okay.
How do you use SQLite with Python? Um, that's a good question. I, I haven't used SQLite specifically with Python. Uh, you probably need to import... SQLite might be built in. Um, if it is, you need to import the package, which is probably just uh, import SQLite. I don't know that I've ever worked with SQLite outside of a, a project in the browser. Um, but I have all the confidence that if you Google it real quick, Google would probably give you a result in the Q&A section. <laughs> that you could use. Or do you already have it imported? Because I think if you just construct the connection string, like what what database engine it uses, uh, and the and the query, um, that that's probably all you need. Okay, so if it's built in, then just try. I don't know if there's any, any, just try import SQLite, S-Q-L-I-T-E, as, you know, SQL, S-Q-L, something like that. And then you should be able to use uh, S-Q-L or SQLite as a prefix. Probably not simplifying it enough. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. There's versioning. Gotcha. Prisons. Yeah, it's real. It's real messed up in the U.S. Uh, as far as those things go. Like I know, to a certain extent, for a long time, the U.S. was held up by a lot of countries, uh, people in other countries, as like, you know, the land of opportunity, the home of the free, yada yada yada. And to a certain extent, that's kind of true. Um, you can have opportunities open to you if you come here, but it, it's, if you're not, if you don't inherit money, it's going to be that much harder. And if you come here with nothing but a dream, then it's probably just going to stay a dream unless you really, really work hard at it. As much as I hate to say it, 99% of the time, um, you're just going to be, and I don't mean for this to sound uh, overly negative, because uh, being an employee has its perks as well, but 99% of the time you're just going to end up working for somebody. 
Which is, I'm sure, everywhere. Um... Right. Yeah. I double jumped. Come on. Yeah, like it's it's easy to think about starting your own business, but actually starting it is a whole other thing. to be the boss. I mean, it's a totally fair point. For sure. Well, not even just the jobs we don't want to, which, you know, yes, also, but um, when you're starting a business, you know, you need people that specialize in, in all those different things. But even just like, if I wanted to start a company that had something to do with chemicals, I don't know anything about chemicals. I would probably hire someone like you or, you know, someone that knew what the hell they were doing with chemicals to do that. But just getting started, if I wanted to do something like that, I'd have to be willing to shell out the money to hire someone uh, from the start and hope that whatever the idea was worked out in the beginning. <laughs> Damn it, come down here. person you hire at the start has a mountain of responsibilities. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. You're not wrong about that. It's actually uh, an interesting situation in the U.S. right now uh, with regards to pay. Um, the government, the U.S. government uh, put in extra money into uh, unemployment benefits. So if you, if you're getting unemployment benefits, you get extra money now. And, um, 
there's a lot of people who are not willing to go back to the jobs that they used to have because the jobs don't pay as well as unemployment is right now for them. And you could kind of go either way with that argument. You could say people are being lazy. Um, and staying on unemployment because they don't want to work. And a lot of people do make that argument. But the... As long as they can match the minimum market value for a fresh graduate. They often, yeah. I mean, in general, like, the first... One of the first rules of business is just going to be, you know, uh, spend less, sell more, basically. It's not a good way of putting it. I just can't think at the moment. Um, if I can get away with paying you less money, why wouldn't I? Well, yeah, it should be, but we also just went through a pandemic, so a lot of people were being asked to stay home if they were not essential personnel. Um, but the... The funny thing is, like, the reason that people don't want to work right now isn't totally because they're lazy. I mean, I'm sure some people are lazy and they're just gaming the system, but, <laughs> like, so many of these people are finally seeing, like, what it's like to not have to live paycheck to paycheck, where you don't know if you're going to be able to afford both you know, your food and your medicine this month or whatever. And like, understandably, they don't want to go back to that while they have the option to not go back to that. Yeah, they, no, I mean, if you get sick or hurt in the U.S., you better have damn good insurance, because <laughs> you'll basically be in debt with that shit for the rest of your life if you're not well insured or well paid, and if it's... If it's an injury that takes you out of work, uh, medical insurance is oftentimes tied to your employment. So if you don't have a job, you don't have insurance, you don't have medical coverage. Uh, like, how all these systems ended up this way is is wild and I can't I can't understand why anybody would be okay with it my <clears throat> my governor um, the governor of my state uh, is basically going back to the prison thing, he keeps talking about legalizing marijuana, collecting the taxes on it, and uh, getting rid of the criminal record of anybody who was who was locked up for it. And it's like, if we do that, A, we get a lot of tax money, um, because they'll put a tax on marijuana sales. B, so many people so many people will be out of jail 
who shouldn't have been there to begin with. Which, I mean, prisoners that come out of jail also have a raw deal. Just because you don't get anything when, you're get <laughs> when you get out of jail. They're like, hey, thanks for coming to jail. Go get a job, bye. But they don't, they don't like assist you. Nobody wants to hire an ex-con. Um, if you end up going to jail in the US, you're pretty much fucked. If you end up getting an injury, a major injury that causes you to be unable to do your normal job, you're kind of fucked. If, uh... <laughs> if you're... If you're a minority, you're kind of fucked. Like, there's... So many ways to, to just get screwed over completely and utterly in the US that it's amazing that anybody thinks this country is the best country in the world. And yet... Patriots exist. Say cheese. Hell yeah, dude. Just finished the weapon. Well, the first weapon mastery for this gun. Demons killed by precision bolt will explode, dealing damage to nearby demons. Uh... Siege mode, the beam now has a devastating area of effect around it. That's pretty cool. Oh, I should work on this. I don't know why I didn't realize I just needed to do the thing. Well, let's do that. Kill three or more demons with siege mode beam ten times. Alright, we could probably work on that. Let's work on... Are there any demons here? In hell? Hello, demons. I gotta change this because demons stagger off less damage because they have high damage resistance when staggered. I don't want that. I want... Um, 
Increases the range of the absorb dropped items. I think dazed and confused. His head blew off. How does that not count as a headshot? Unless I can shoot their heads off after they're already dead. So yeah, like, I don't want it to sound like I don't like my country. I just want it to be better. And I think it can be. Siege mode. Okay, that didn't work. There was one. That didn't work.
should probably go to bed. <laughs> I don't know how close I am to the end, though. What's worse is I have a meeting at 9 a.m. So, yeah, I'll come back to this. Maybe I'll come back to it tomorrow for a short stream. <laughs> it shouldn't be that bad, but it might be that bad. Um, but, yeah, okay. Well, it's good chatting with you, man. I will catch up with you next time. Have a good night. Or a good day, I guess. Yeah, do good. There's a... Big data is going to be a real big field uh, going forward. I mean, it already is, but... <clears throat> if you can work with data, you're going to be... You're going to be... You're going to be all set for it. I don't know if it's dying. Why do you think it's dying? Oil and gas are probably going to, yeah. To a certain extent. I think oils... Oil will probably be used in other forms. Um, but they, I'm, I doubt they'll be um, as prevalent as they were. Semiconductors is in the future, but it's basically manufacturing. Yeah, but somebody's got to design and set those up, right? Yeah. Water will grow, but not in Singapore. Well, not until you desalinate all that water that's around you guys. <laughs> There's lots of water in the ocean. For now, yeah. <clears throat> Those costs can come down. You just have to find the right processes. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, you're right, though. Because all that, all the extra stuff gets pumped right back into the water, right? All the stuff you extracted from the water. So you'd have to release it slowly. Like really slowly. But yeah, no, I, I see what you mean. Right. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of problems in the world today that they're going to need someone to figure them out. That's what the engineers do. And then they hand that off to um, technicians and such. And then the technicians do the, the dirty work. Europe and the US are big markets for renewables. I know it's going to be big, big markets, but I don't, I didn't know who are the big players in manufacturing them. I haven't really been paying that much attention to that side of it. But, I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of jobs out there, but things are going to move quickly, I think, compared to years ago. So if you can't, 
if you're not flexible, you're going to be falling behind. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, uh, if you want to talk programming, I'll be available, probably. Later, man.